Hello everyone, I hope that you've been finding my videos useful so far. Today I'm just going to go through and make these parts that I received a couple days ago. They are for the tailwheel lock. Now if we go to the assembly here, this is the tailwheel assembly. Zoom in here. Those parts are actually shown right here. Uh, so the tailwheel can rotate back and forth and then the little nub that you saw on the part here I would actually hold bolts and somehow I believe that locks it. I haven't gone through the whole assembly and figured all of that out yet, but hopefully we will figure that out sooner or later when we actually put that assembly together in SolidWorks. Excuse me there. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is open up part here. I don't have SolidWorks open quite yet gonna open that up. Before I actually start anything I always just take a look through the drawing try and figure out whatever I can. First thing I really noticed here is that we have two different dimensions here. We have these dashed lines up at the top. That shows me the forging dimension. This would be a part that would be forged and then machined down. Another little thing to note is that there's a draft angle because it is forged. So I just go over to the notes, read all of this. For the most part, you don't have to pay attention to the flags until you see them over in the drawing. Uh, flag one and two are here. It's all about plating dimensions. So for flag one, I believe is after plating and flag two is before. You can see flag two is just a little bit larger. Now for our SOLIDWORKS model, we are just going to do after plating. We aren't going to worry about having plating dimensions. If we went to manufacture this part, we'd have to go back and we would update the model to not have the plating so that when it gets CNC'd, you still have space for the uh, plating thickness. And then we would do the plating and it would match our proper dimension. Now the first thing uh, that's really important in these notes is that we have a 7 degree draft angle for part dash 1. Go down to our parts list. Dash 1 is just the forging, and then the actual part number is the machined part. Um, now, material of the part is flag 4. Um, so it's, it's just a steel material, um, which appears to have been normalized. Um, and then, of course, you have case hardening around the slot, but that's only around the slot. We aren't going to worry about that for the SolidWorks model. It doesn't matter for us. So we'll just get started here. In case you haven't noticed already, I'm using 2017-2018 version. It's the student edition. Now, if you are a member of the EAA, you can get a copy of the student edition for free. Uh, it is not the copy that I am using right now, but it is very, very similar. I'm actually not going to open a part. We're going to start a new part. I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to put it in my other screen so that I can keep looking at it. First thing I always do is I save it. We are going to save this in my temporary folder because I don't have a path to it quite yet. There's only one part, I'm not going to make a subfolder. Just going to put in the part number. I'm not going to deal with having two parts, uh, forging and then a machine part, we're just going to make it in one go. And one thing I've noticed is that the most important thing in SolidWorks make sure that you get all of your sketches right. If you can sketch really well, uh, the features will not be a problem. But if you have incorrect sketches, you will have a problem with your features, and that is not fun. So, my first little issue that I think we're going to have here is that we have a forging dimension off to our side here. We don't seem to have a dimension to the outer most side here. I can't quite tell where that arrow goes. That's another little problem that we're going to have. Luckily I do have an actual copy here. 
which I will measure later and I'll make sure that we got this right. But for right now, to make it easy and make it fast for everyone, I'm going to call that our further, our furthermost uh, mention. It goes all the way out to the edge. That was 3.4 radius, so I have to multiply that by 2. There's going to be our base circle, and then as you noticed, we have a little sort of nub going off on the end here. One thing that took me a little bit of time to get used to is that you have three types of arcs that you can make, and using the right one really saves you a lot of time if you use it at the first moment. So I'm going to use a center point arc here. We're just going to get the automatic tangent relations. Even though those lines don't go quite where we want them yet, uh, we'll just get those relations so that we have to do less. Now I just selected our tangent arc so it automatically creates a tangent relation uh, no matter where it is, but you do have to click on the end of a segment. There's our first one, there's our second one, and then we're just going to make those tangent as well. Now those are going to be equal, and those are going to be and you can tell right away this looks completely wrong, but you'll you'll see it come together here. Now the next thing we have going on here, another one of these radiuses. Now I can't be entirely sure why this doesn't go all the way to the center. Um, it definitely should go all the way to the center, otherwise you would have a circle that goes more like this. Um, I think it might have been copying error. Um, could also be to make it a little bit more clear, but either way, that is our dimension. And again, that's going to go the outermost edge. Then we can dimension these, those are very clear. Actually, we aren't going to dimension those quite yet because it created that little sketch error. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually dimension how far out this goes. Now I have a dimension to the center of this, center of this. That's going to be 4.9 inches. Now we can make 0.5. And it will update a little bit better. And then we can drag that out. Now it's starting to look a lot better. Our final dimension is just from center line down to our radius, and that's 3.32 inches. Ooh, nope, it's 3.32 inches between the two. There we go. Now you can see this one is not shaded in, uh, and this one is. That's because we have this solid line going between, so I'm just going to click Trim Entities, trim that out until it highlights like that. That's our base for the forging. Now we're just going to make an extrude boss base. We're going to make it a mid-plane, which means it extrudes out from the sketch equally in both directions. And we're just going to make this our final machined dimension, not the forging dimension. So that's going to be 0.38 inches. And then we're going to add a draft angle. Really easy, you just click this button and it automatically does it for you. Uh, it was 7 degrees. And if you look on the side, you can see that it's drafting in 7 degrees. We're just going to click check to that, and now we have our forging. Now the drawings also said that you would have a 0.6 or a 0 0.06 inch radius along all of the edges. But when we look at the drawing here, uh, it is machined down and that 0 0.06 would actually be uh, used up as we machine it down. It'd still be a little bit of that angle there, but we're not going to deal with that. 
he actually made this part and that was a necessary feature. You could sand it down uh, on a CNC, you could just have it machined off. It's all very easy to do. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to deal with these holes. One's right in the center. I'm just going to start a sketch there. We're going to start out with our smallest dimension hole, the one right in the center. I'm just over here looking at the part. So we have a forging dimension cross here. Again, we aren't doing the forging right now, so we don't want to deal with that. We want this one. Um, now again, there's dash one and dash two. I forget which one we need. We want after plating, so we want dash one or flag one. And that's 3.51 inches. And that's to our inner circle here. So 3.51. We're going to make that cut all the way through. Now before I decide where I want this sketch to be, this hole does not go all the way through. So I want to find the depth that it goes through. Um, not seeing the dimension right away, it looks like it is 0.28 inches on the forging from this side, um, and it is 0.195 after plating from this side that we have right here. Now I'm going to find the dimension for this, again after plating, like it is 5.6 inches. We don't want that, we want any cut. And we're going to do in our from we're going to do an offset. We're going to make that the thickness that it said. 0.195 inches after plating. Now it offset the wrong direction, so I'm just going to click the reverse button. I'm going to make that through all. And hit check. Now we have that recess uh, just like it should be. Now looking on the drawing, around this inner corner we also have specific a fillet that is 0 0.05 inches. And then on our center right there, we have a chamfer 45 degrees by 0 0.02 inches. I believe that is all for this section. We now have our inner part of the forging machined out. Now we just have to deal with the slot right here and the hole right there. I'm just going to start out with that hole. Now you see if I hold on the edge here it shows me a little center point right there. That's what I want. I already know the distance out that that, it, that, that is. Uh, and then we're going to ream this to 0.5 inches. And just to make sure, it should be 4.9 inches from our center point. That's 4.9 exactly. You can see over here, that there aren't a whole bunch of zeros and then like a one. It's exactly 4.900 inches. So that hole will be good, just make an extrusion all the way through. Give that a save. Now we have to deal with the slot. Now this slot is going to be a little bit harder than you might expect. Because we can't just do that drafting trick. You can do the draft trick on cuts as well. As you'll see here, it only drafts on these sides. <laughs> so I think the easiest way to do this is to make a plane and then make an extrusion through. Now 
Now we have to find out where this starts. It's 3.4 inches out. Now, instead of making a plane, which takes a little bit of time, I'm just going to make a sketch on our right plane, like this. And we're going to check that um, they're doing this in the right direction. It should be wider at the top on the side that doesn't have the recess. So we will sketch the wide part on the top of our sketch. It's going to give us a center line dimension off of. And then again we're going to mirror this so we don't have to draw the entire thing. Now looking at my drawing we want flag 1 and it's 0.5 so 0.25 and then we have 22 and a half degrees from the other side so it's 11.25 now we can mirror that. We have an enclosed sketch and we're ready to go. I'm just going to make an extruded cut. I'm going to do another offset. This time we are going to offset to the distance that our drawing tells us, which is 3.4 inches. Again, other direction. Then we're going to make a mid-plane, because that dimension is actually to the middle of the slot. The slot is 0.62 inches wide. So we just click check to that. Last thing to notice is that we have a radius on the inside here, a fillet. And it's 0.1 inches true. Uh, we don't have to worry about the true in this instance, because SolidWorks will do it exactly as we need it. So. 0.1 inches, make a check on that. Again, looking at the drawings, there's no uh, radiuses on the corners here, so you don't have to worry about that. And no radiuses here except for this, so 0 0.03 inches on the top. And that will go all the way around. It doesn't say here, because it's implied that it goes all the way around on this one. It is not implied, however, that it is on the bottom corners. Um, although they may have wanted that, you'd have to look at an original to find out. So, 0 0.03 inches around that top edge. Now, if we compare that with our drawing view, it should be just about right. And even look at the hidden lines, although it will be a little bit more complex because we did not draw all of the lines that are now standard uh, in drafting. But you can see that's exactly what we have. Last thing is, we're just going to apply a material. Um, yep, it's just a... Right there, there's our steel type. Um, 4615, I don't think SolidWorks has 4615, but we can take a look. Um, they do not have any 46 series. So again, I'm just going to make it 4130. Pretty common. We're just going to make it normalized. So there we go. That is our brake locking disc, or our uh, tailwheel locking disc. Then, if we compare that back to our original images, of course, these ones are pretty worn, um, but you can see that we just made that exactly. Then, looking on this, on the back side, it doesn't look like there actually is a radius around those, but there is a radius on the front side, so we got that correct. Um, and again, right around those edges, there's a little bit of a radius, uh, which would have been from when they were actually forged. So there we go. That is our completed part. And I will 
now do some renders and put it on the Facebook page, but I won't make you sit through all of that. Feel free to skip to the end, skip to the next one, uh, whatever you want. Or you can stay and you can watch me do a couple of renders. They aren't too interesting after you see one or two. They're going to turn on perspective view there. But it does make them look a lot more presentable and real. Again, if you want to do this with the EAA version, you can't, unfortunately, uh, because they don't have the full professional student version, which is, I believe, what it's called, which is a little bit ironic. Uh, but that's just how it goes, unfortunately. There are other ways that you can get it, but you'll have to research that yourself. I'm just messing around with different backgrounds to find one that makes it look nice. I think 3-point faded is going to be our best one for this side. I'm just going to make a final render now. should be a pretty quick one. It's a single part and of only one uh, texture, which is our material. Sometimes if you add different textures or colors to different faces, it will take longer because, um, as you can see down here, it actually has millions of different light rays, which it calculates, uh, and they reflect a whole bunch of times and refract. So the fewer textures, the easier it is for the computer to actually render that. Unfortunately, this only uses CPU power. It does not use GPU, so if you want to use your graphics card to render, uh, unfortunately you can't. Now I'm just going to add the date to the end of this, 1.13.19. I'm also going to add the tag A because I'm going to make multiple renders today. And the next one we're going to do is we're just going to flip over to the back side. I'm going to see if rooftop works for this one. I like how that looks, so I'm just going to click final render. And once this one is done, we'll end the video, and I hope that you all enjoyed it, and will be able to use some of this information on your own builds. Alright, well, thank you all for watching. Again, I hope that the drafting information will help you, as well as uh, the offsets from sketches, so that you can make parts like that very easily. You don't have to deal with planes or anything like that. Uh, it keeps your feature manager tree very simple. Make a complex part super, super easily. Now I'm just going to pop over to our renders tab. I'm just gonna open up those images so that you can see them. You know, you can see our draft angle there, our slot, the recess, the fillet, you can even see the chamfer around that edge. Gotta mix out of this to get to the next one, I guess. But again, that little radius there and the draft angle. So I hope you enjoyed it, hope it was useful, uh, please like this video if it helped you out, and subscribe to see more. Thank you.